Um, I'm excited to be here tonight. I'm excited to be here at your school um, in your city. Like driving here today was unbelievable. It really took my breath away. This, you guys have got to be grateful for where you live. I mean, just seeing the bluffs, seeing the valleys, seeing the greenery, and then coming in town, seeing all the water, seeing all the mature trees, like you guys are pretty lucky. If I didn't work for Discover Wisconsin, maybe I'd work for Explore Minnesota and come here because you guys have it made. Like she said, I just drove about an hour and a half to be here with you and I'm really excited to be here because it wasn't too long ago that I was sitting in your seats, students. In fact, it was about 12 years ago that I was uh, a small town student athlete. And so I'm just like you, except I have 12 more years of life experience. And so I have 20 minutes here tonight to share with you what I've learned in those 12 years and hopefully it can bring you some value. And another reason that I'm happy to be here in Houston is that I think we probably have a lot in common because don't let the introduction fool you, I grew up as a country kid. I mean, I was, I grew up building fence, I grew up cutting wood, I grew up driving tractors, dri driving my dad's truck to the dump on Saturday mornings. Um, I grew up eating sweet corn and venison. How many of you guys can kind of relate to my upbringing and say, yeah, there's a little bit of country in me too. A few of you. Something big happened in first grade. I fell in love, but it wasn't with a girl. It wasn't with my teacher. I fell in love with the game of basketball. And I quickly realized like, the only way I could really be happy is if I played and lived and breathed basketball all the time. So my whole life was basketball. It's what made me happy. I became a good player for Black River Falls High School. I ended up at Grinnell College down in Grinnell, Iowa. So as you can imagine, I wasn't throwing down too many dunks in college, but I wasn't afraid to let it fly from anywhere. Coach came into practice that week and said, look, our best scorer, Jack, he's in a shooting slump. What if we can get him out of this? And instead of beating these guys by 30, the traditional way, playing our bench players, and having nobody remember this game ever again, what if, we were creative, and we let Jack shoot the ball almost every single time down the court. How many of you kids, have, how many of you students have done that with like video games, 2K? You play with one player, and you just shoot every time just to see how many points he can get. My coach was crazy enough to do that in real life. And in the second half, I finally got him out of my shooting slump, and I scored 138 points in a game. And I'm like you, I'm from a small town of Black River Falls, and right after the game, I was standing on the court with my parents, I'll never forget it. The sports information director came down and said, hey Jack, can you come with me? Because Sports Center is on the phone right now, and they wanna to talk to you. And just like you, being from a small town, just my eyes were just huge. And I went through all the rounds, I was on Sports Center, I was on Jimmy Kimmel, I was on Dan Patrick, like all of these crazy shows, everything that I dreamed about as a kid, it was actually happening for real. After my career there, the ball finally stopped bouncing for me. That was a hard time for me in my life because I started my asking myself, was this all a waste of time? How much do sports really matter in our life? Why are we all here? This is a big event, why are we here? Because we as a culture, you guys as a community, you guys as a school district, we all make a big deal out of sports, don't we? And if you step back for a second, just think about how much money this school pays to compete in athletics. It's a lot more than almost anything else. Think about how much of the school budget goes towards sports. It's literally millions of dollars. And all for what? To chase a ball around, to yell at the referees till we're blue in the face? to give each other concussions, to tear our ACLs and tear up our ankles? And is it all just for fun? Because sports are fun, but couldn't we find something else to do that's fun that didn't cost a million dollars? Because I've heard some of these arguments before. How many of you have heard, we need to only focus on academics, not athletics? I've heard that before, but here's what those people don't understand. And this is what I've learned in the past 12 years. Sports can teach you things that the classroom can't. That doesn't mean that it's more important. But the fact of the matter is you can learn things competing in your sports this school year 
that you can't learn in the classroom. Sports are only valuable as a tool if we use them the right way. And so often, we're just focused on winning, on championships, on getting our names in the paper, getting recruited, making the state tournament, like the girls basketball team just did. Congratulations, I'm jealous. Yep. Super jealous, but very happy for you. But, believe it or not, as exciting as that was, there's bigger reasons that we play the game. There's something more important as to why you're all here tonight. And the more important thing, it's you. None of it is ultimately about Hurricane Athletics. It's not about what you can accomplish, it's about who you're becoming and the role that sports can play in your development as a person. So for me, even though the ball has stopped bouncing for me, even though I don't have a step back three, even though I had a, don't have a jumper anymore, even though sports aren't directly helping my life, sports is absolutely the reason that I'm standing here today. And believe it or not, I'm more grateful for who I've become through sports than anything I've ever accomplished in sports. Because those records that you heard about in the introduction, they're fun, they're nice to say, but they're not helping me anymore. It's just, it's dead history. But my character, my integrity, my mindset, that still sticks with me and it's helping me every day of my life. Use sports to develop a work ethic. So challenge yourself this year, push yourself. Don't coast your way through every practice that you can. Develop a work ethic. It's why your coaches push you, right? Don't get mad at your coaches for pushing you. That's their job. It's their job to make practice tough sometimes. You know why? Because life is tough sometimes. And this is all just a big training ground for the rest of your life. So use sports to welcome the challenge of working hard. Hang your hat on it. And if you do learn how to work hard, and it becomes a part of who you are, how you're wired, it'll see you through college, it'll see you through grad school, through your career, whatever you choose to do, it'll see you through your family life, because I know I'm young, but I'll tell you this, marriage and fatherhood, it's a lot harder than playing high school sports. How many of your parents would agree with that? this year to develop your leadership skills. Make it a focus. Make it a, make it a point. Learn how to encourage your teammates. Encourage your coaches. Speak life into those around you. Lift up your teammates after a loss. Use sports to learn how not to quit. Because today, when my marriage gets tough, I'm not quitting. There's no way I'm caving in and giving up on my family. Why? Because basketball taught me how not to quit. And I never learned this lesson in the classroom. It came in athletics. And I learned it when I graduated high school without one Division I offer. That was tough, but I chose not to quit. I learned it right before college when, when I ended up tearing my ACL, tearing my MCL, tearing my lateral meniscus, has, had a bunch of bone bruising in my knee. And there's gonna be times this year when you want to quit. Maybe it's quit on a play or quit giving your maximum effort in practice. But I'm telling you, it translates. If you make it a habit of quitting right now, whenever you feel like it, guess what will happen for the rest of your life? You'll quit when you feel like it. I still remember when I was your age, a time when I was in high school, I had an opposing point guard score 18 points on me in the first half. We got to the locker room and my coach tore me a new one in front of everybody. It was not subtle. It was not fun, but I deserved it. I quit on my teammates on the defensive end. So I had a choice. Athletics taught me that I had a choice. I could cry about how much my coach yelled at me. I could ask my parents to talk to the administration about it. I could fold like a cheap lawn chair and have a bad attitude in the second half. I could blame my teammates for not playing any help defense, or I could learn how to listen to my coach, how to not give up, how to work harder. That was another learning experience that I never learned in the classroom, that I learned on the basketball floor. So about five years ago, my wife and I, we got pregnant. We 
had a beautiful little girl named Abigail. And I am telling you that when I became a dad, and as I'm parenting her, she is the sweetest little girl in the world, and she has my entire heart. And she looks me in the eye every single day. And she's trusting me with her entire life. So for her sake, I better have used sports to build some character. Because she's standing on the foundation of my character, the foundation of my life that I developed, that I started developing when I was your age. And let me tell you, these 12 years go like that. There's no time for messing around or neglecting your character. It goes like that. So my little Abigail, she's hoping that my character is strong enough for her to thrive in. She's hoping that I have the work ethic to provide for her, that I have the strength to keep her safe, that I have the kindness to make her happy, the toughness to never give up and walk out on her. So you see, she's not focused, she's not depending on my free throw percentage. She doesn't care if I won a conference championship or I broke some records in college. She doesn't care. She's not depending how popular I was in high school, how many points I scored, how many Instagram followers I have. That's not what she's depending on. Her singular hope in the world is that her dad is a man of character. That's what matters. That's the North Star that we have to be striving for in this room. And sports helped me build that foundation that I can build, that, I can, that everything in my life can stand on. And now, this is not a perfect foundation. There's plenty of cracks. There's plenty of weaknesses. But through sports, because of sports, it's strong. It's sturdy. And because I have a strong foundation underneath me, I can put a lot on it. I can handle a lot. I can have a strong career. I can have a strong family because of what sports has taught me. And that's the opportunity that you guys have in front of you tonight. Right now, make this year different than last year. Shift your focus. Pour your heart and soul into what you can learn through sports. And don't ever let anyone tell you that this is just a game. Why do you care so much? Why do you work so hard? It's not just a game. It's way more than that. You're building the most important part of your life who you are. You're developing who you are. And you only get to do that one time. And it's right now. So I'm pleading with you. This year, play the game the right way. With the right attitude, with the right commitment, with the right energy. And I promise you, I promise you, that in 12 years, you'll be thankful for it. You'll be thankful that you didn't just play sports, but that you used it to become a person of character. So don't waste it. Thank you.